Now it's actually my honor to, uh, to say the last few words and get back to the presentation I gave in the beginning. I see a lot of connections with the, uh, with the presentations that were just given and my own, even though they're a bit different in nature. The presentations just now present many different conceptual ideas about learning and about what should be taught in classes and how that should be guided to students. And my presentation is about the program as a whole. You could say, where's the connection? But I see what I'm about to present as not just a solution to my own struggle that I started off with regarding the tension between researching technical sciences or researching humanities, but also as a suggested, well, name it, vocabulary, scaffold, framework, or context against which the contents of the program that we provide can be justified to all these critical students that look at the program and l consider, well, why am I studying this? What is the purpose of me studying this? And yeah, where is that ground based on which people make me study this? Because that's something that self-directed learners tend to ask as soon as they have to study something. So I will come to integrating liberal and engineering education, and I will propose two ways of thinking about this. One way to characterize complexity and the complexity uh, that I earlier argued that is inherent to liberal education, and one way to think about um, what we teach in a way that we avoid the ne necessity to educate everything that there is. All right, let's dive into it. We have a recap, a brief recap, of what I started out with. These tensions between engineering education and liberal education, where I characterize engineering education as being centered on the graduate's capacities uh, at, in a knowledge-oriented way, that they're able to do X by virtue of having acquired this piece of knowledge and that it focuses on the study of tangible and observable elements in reality through structured interpretations, interpretations that line up with each other and that build forth on each other. And you need to know formula X to get to the higher order formulas. I say this is a somewhat modernist grounding. Then I characterize liberal education as being more person-centered, the graduate is able to do X through the person and the insight the graduate has gained. And that it does so by studying almost any academic or societal con uh, concept and subject with respect to the complexity that uh, inherently inhabits reality, which you can see as the inherent limitation that a single perspective on a, on a situation brings that you need to bring in more perspectives. It has a grounding in this complexity. We also concluded that these two elements meet in connection to the real world. <coughs> so the first concept typology that I would uh, propose is the framework of transdisciplinarity by Manfred Max Neff. He published a paper in 2005 on different levels of what exists in the world. How you can characterize the world in, with respect to the complexity that inherently is present in the world. And he starts with the level of what exists. There are different disciplines of study that focus on what exists in the world and you get to the studies of mathematics, physics, chemistry, psychology, sociology, economy. There are multiple more of this, and these disciplines all study, well, what exists in the world, what we are experiencing all together. 
The second level, which feeds into the level of what exists and builds forward, forth on that, is <coughs> the level of what we're capable of. What we're capable of as human beings in this world that exists, and what we can do with that, how we can manipulate the world, how we can extend on what exists in the world, make it a better place. You find here disciplines such as engineering, architecture, or commerce. A fourth level, a third level, we're not yet on the fourth level, is what do we want to do with the abilities that we have? What do we then want to do in the world? And we call this the normative level. You choose one thing over the other. And f to do this, you make arguments. And these arguments you see reflected in disciplines such as law, politics, design, and planning. The fourth and final level overarches this element, and it looks at how to do what we want to do, or rather, what we must do. And it bases itself on values, and it's called the value level. And you see disciplines such as ethics and philosophy coming back at this level. And that, again, informs what we want to do, what we want to do informs what we are capable of, and then it goes on to what exists and changing that. Now, I present this not just because I think this is a beautiful framework, which I do, um, but also because I would see a distinction. You see different ontologies being reflected. You see different disciplines looking at what exists, physics, mathematics, chemistry, uh, psychology, etc. So they're joined in a framework. I also see that engineering has a bit more relevance to two of the levels than liberal education has to the others. Engineering very much focuses on what exists and what we can do in that world that exists, very much on the structured interpretations of reality. And I would claim that that would be mathematics, physics, chemistry, these interpretations, and it is very well able to look at what we're capable of doing in these contexts and changing that. Now, I would argue that liberal education focuses more on the normative level and the value level uh, that are on, like above that. And these are actually two types of interdisciplinarity, Max Neff argues, because they cross two levels. But if you cross all levels, that is what he defines as a transdisciplinary action. And this offers a very interesting perspective because this offers a link between the ways of study in liberal education and the ways of study in engineering education. When you're able to cross all these four levels, you uh, reflect on the values that underlie what you want to do and you reflect on what you're capable of from that perspective and then go on to what exists, you have an action that crosses all four levels. I see this very much relevant to the semester projects that we offer and this, the, the projects in which we try to deal with this complexity. We may be able to, to guide students in taking on these elements. But based on the same argument, you could argue that we would need to study every single discipline that I just named and all their contents and all that is in that discipline, all the knowledge it has gathered. And I would say that is not feasible at all. And I think you all agree. But what then do we teach? I say we need to go beyond the idea of the zero-sum game. The idea that you choose one topic over the other and that you thereby study more of discipline X and less of discipline Y. <laughs> I would suggest to look at a higher level of skill and a higher level of what we educate students for. And this is not some new argument that I'm presenting right now, I know. Um, and I would like to go back to 1828. 
where Yale University was under pressure to move towards a more specialized curriculum, a, a curriculum that, that would educate students to get into specialized research masters and let go of their core curriculum, be more elective-based. And they came up with the first modernist argument for a core curriculum, and it goes as follows. Two great points, the two great points to be gained in intellectual culture are the discipline and the furniture of mind, expanding its powers and storing it with knowledge. The former of these is perhaps the more important of the two. Those branches of study should be prescribed and those modes of t instruction adopted which are best calculated to teach the art of fixing the attention, directing the train of thought, analyzing a subject proposed for investigation, goes on for like that for a while, rousing and guiding the powers of genius. Now this is a very bold statement, but to me it makes a very important differentiation you have furniture of mind, the knowledge with which you store uh, your, your mind and the student's mind, and you have the ways you go about thinking yourself, the ways you direct your train of thought, the skill that you apply by, by doing so, or I feel like I'm talking about higher order thinking skills in these sense. Now, to relate this to engineering, since this was obviously in, in liberal education context, yeah, please, come in. That's no problem at all. Take a seat. Um, MIT, in 1949, observed this, the following problematic element. Students are able to graduate on the basis of routine learning and that though often fully equipped with the knowledge of standard procedures and able to apply formulas to typical problems, they lack the critical judgment, the creative imagination, the competence in handling unique situations. And I feel like this remark, although seemingly outdated, is as relevant today as it was back, th back then. We saw some others relate to it as well where lifelong learning is a burden additional to what is going on, or that, well, name it, is secondary to the specialization that a student gathers, or the knowledge that a student is equipped with eventually. And relating this to a study which aspires to facilitate individual learning paths, and integrate engineering education with liberal education is faced with a whole package of these tensions and problems. What I would say is that what we should aim our core curriculum at is something that would be useful to all students, which reflects the respect for complexity that is held and well, has relevance to each subject that a student might venture off into later in their academic year, career. One of these ideas is the project on styles of thinking. And I chose this because I felt like it related very well to the idea of transdisciplinarity that I just described and has strong empirical basis in the practice of science and the history of science, how science has been going about and what science is today. And, well, Crombie introduced this based on his empirical work into the history of science, where he identified six different styles of thinking. Well, mathematical thinking, experimental thinking, hypothetical modeling, a classificatory approach, or taxonomic, a statistical way of thinking, and a historico-genetic way of thinking. Now, I'm not going to explain all of these, but I just want to make the point that this provides a framework with ways of going about science 
that are still present, very present today, very present in all different kinds of disciplines, which do not put disciplines at odds with each other, where one is valued more than the other for its practical implications and its use, but it just provides six different ways of finding out about the world, if you look, look at that. Now, each of these styles of thinking has their own, well, their own convictions about nature and its knowability, the ontology, the idea of what exists. They also have their own convictions about science itself. How do you go about science? How do you organize inquiry, argument, and explanation? Relates to, well, if you ask me, it relates to the purposive element and the normative level where you uh, go about justifying your practices. And each of these six styles has their own social conceptions of what is desirable and the values it maintains regarding that. I would find it very desirable if we can teach students to, well, identify these styles of thinking, respect these styles of thinking, know how to go about them, and ultimately know how they relate to each other. And identify when they're applying them themselves. If we can edu educate them in these elements, they will come back in their later projects, and they will enable them to work in interdisciplinary projects. And students will be able to venture off in different disciplines while remaining aware of the value of the others. So I want to leave you with these two final thoughts. These two ways of thinking about what we do in our program. One way of bridging the problem of dealing with complexity in the real world, the transdisciplinary framework, where we should aim to bridge all four levels of transdisciplinarity. And the idea of what we then should teach students in this context. Six styles of thinking. Maybe there is another very good framework that can, can replace that. But I feel like this is a very good candidate. And by doing so, we may be able to explain this very critical student about what it's studying and why. Why we think it's very valuable to study this. And why we propose the subjects that we do. I want to leave you with that thought.